Good morning. Today I'm going to be reviewing this Vostok Amphibia 090661M. I bought this watch from chisterpolcity.com and paid 73 US dollars for it, including shipping. The watch took three weeks to be delivered from Russia to Ireland, and that's typical, so that's something I want you to bear in mind. If you buy a Vostok Amphibia from Russia, three weeks international delivery is typical, so one has to be patient. But I'm pleased to report that the watch is worth waiting for. So firstly, I will talk you through the watch box, and then I will talk you through the other items that come with the Vostok Amphibia. So this is the typical Vostok Amphibia watch box. As you can see, it says Vostok on the lid. And it's a basic matte black plastic watch box with a hinged lid. Now, bearing in mind the low tier price point of the watch, it's only 73 US dollars. I'm not going to be critical of it being basic. It has a hinged lid and the watch itself sits inside on this piece of plastic. Now, the watch comes wrapped in bubble wrap to prevent it from any scuffs or scratches in shipping. And it, the lid clicks shut with a positive click. So... It's a basic watch box, but it does do the job of protecting the watch in transit. So I'll talk you through the other items that come with the Vostok Amphibia. It, one also gets this owner's instruction manual, and as you can see, it has Amphibia in Russian Cyrillic. And uh, the bottom right says 2415 in the reference, and that refers to the caliber 2415 movement used in this watch. It's an automatic 31 joule movement. Now, inside is completely in uh, Russian Cyrillic. So the owner's manual is very basic, although it does have a diagram which details the crown setting positions. But unfortunately, unless you are able to read Russian Cyrillic, it's going to be of no use to you whatsoever. The back page is usually stamped by the dealer selling the watch, but I bought this online from chisterpolcity.com, so they haven't stamped um, the owner's instruction manual with their dealer stamp and the date of purchase. But if one looks at the reverse of the uh, instructions, one can see the date of manufacture. So this watch was produced on the 29th of November 2019. So that's what the um, owner's instruction manual looks like. Now I'll also show you the other things that come with the watch. One also gets a second basic booklet with the alternate spelling of Vostok. Uh, Vostok in Russian Cyrillic means East. So the watches are produced in Chistopol in Russia. This is an international authorized Vostok dealer list and it's entirely printed in Russian. So again, unless you can read Russian, it's of no use to you whatsoever. Um, but it's a useful read if you are able to read Russian because you can see which is the authorised dealer for Vostok in your own country. Now, fortunately, Chistopol City understand that not everyone can read Russian, so they have kindly printed out a translation into English with a diagram of the crown setting positions and instructions of how to set the time using the Calibre 2415B automatic movement. So this is a useful read if you're unfamiliar with the 2415B automatic movement. So I'll talk you through the watch. This Vostok Amphibia really hasn't changed much from the original. So as I've discussed, Vostok means East in Russian and Amphibia was the name given to this model of dive watch, which was originally created in 1967 for Soviet naval divers. So originally the Amphibia was a military issued watch. And after being proven by the Soviet naval divers, it was then issued to the public. It was sold in Russia to the public and also supplied to the Soviet naval divers as a military issue piece. So interesting history. The watch really does have um, Russian military pedigree. And really it hasn't changed much since the early 1967 versions, which are now referred to as the 2209. Now 2209 is not actually the reference number of the piece. It refers to the movement number, the Calibre 2209, which was a manual wind 18 joule movement. Now, the movement used in this watch is automatic, and it's effectively the same movement as the original 2209. It's the 2415B, which is the same movement, but with a rotor added to it to give it bi-directional automatic winding. So I'll talk you through the specifications of this Vostok Amphibia. 41 mm tonneau case, which is solid stainless steel. It has a 22 mm lug width and a lug to lug measurement of 48 mm. Now, I consider 48 mm to be the perfect lug to lug measurement for all wrist sizes. 
This tonneau case will suit collectors with a smaller wrist of 6 to 7 inches and it will also suit collectors with a larger wrist of 7 to 8 inches respectively. The undercut and curved profile of the tonneau case means that it wraps around the wrist. So it's 15 millimeters thick, including the domed crystal and the screw down stainless steel case back. It's a tall piece, but because of the curved profile of the tonneau case, it wraps around the wrist and it fits very well, bearing in mind that it's 15 millimeters and 41 millimeters uh, diameter. Now the original 1967 Vostok Amphibia had an 18 millimeter lug width, which was um, quite a popular size in the t of the time, but I'm pleased to report that Vostok have upgraded the lug width on this contemporary amphibia to 22 millimeters, and that gives more strap and bracelet options if you want to change the bracelet for a NATO strap, rubber strap, or stainless steel bracelet. As 21, as 22 millimeters is a more common size than 18 millimeters today. So there are several unique um, design features of this watch, which I'll talk you through. The first that I want to explain is the um, Lucite Dome Crystal. The Lucite Dome Crystal is a form of acrylic and the unique property of Lucite is that it deforms plastically under load. Now, if this domed crystal was made out of mineral crystal or sapphire, it would crack under pressure. But one can actually drive across this watch with a car and the crystal won't crack because it's three millimeters thick, which is around three times thicker than a typical mineral crystal or sapphire crystal. So it's an incredibly thick and tough crystal. Now, because Lucite deforms plastically under pressure, it provides an effective hermetic seal between the crystal and the case. Normally the design of dive watches is that the crystal is sealed to the stainless steel case using an o-ring and the o-ring provides the hermetic seal but with the uh, lucite dome crystal in the amphibia it's a different design because the domed crystal effectively becomes the gasket um, it becomes the hermetic seal between the crystal and the case itself because the lucite doesn't crack it deforms plastically under pressure so this watch is uh, water resistant to 200 meters of uh, water resistance uh, the Lucite Dome Crystal provides one effective hermetic seal to 200 meters. The Solid Stainless Steel Crown provides a second hermetic seal. And lastly, there's a third hermetic seal to 200 meters with the Solid Stainless Steel Case Back. So I'll talk you through another unique design aspect of this amphibia. If one unscrews the crown from the stainless steel crown tube and pulls it out, one can see that the crown is solid stainless steel with a coin edge finish but it has a characteristic wobble as you can see. Now one could be forgiven for thinking that characteristic wobble is actually a defect, that it's a production defect or a quality control issue, but it's not. The reason why the solid stainless steel crown wobbles on the winding stem is it's, it's because it has a clutch mechanism inside the stainless steel crown. The purpose of the clutch mechanism is to make the crown float on the winding stem. So why does it do that? Why is it disengaged from the winding stem? Well, it protects the movement from shock damage. As you can see, the tonneau case doesn't have any crown guards. In the 1960s, dive watches typically didn't have crown guards. They predated the use of crown guards to protect the stem from impact damage. But due to the clutch mechanism and the crown wobbling on it, it actually protects the winding stem from shock damage. So for example, if a diver is wearing this watch and hits the crown of a rock, normally what would happen is the rock would transmit shock damage through the stainless steel crown down the winding stem into the center of the movement and the shock damage would vibrate the movement and knock out the calibration. It would damage the movement with shock. But what happens with the clutch mechanism inside the stainless steel crown is the clutch mechanism isolates the shock damage from the crown to the winding stem so the clutch actually absorbs the shock and it works very effectively because it negates the need for crown guards on the tonneau case if this stainless steel crown is hit with an impact um, the shock doesn't go into the movement the clutch mechanism isolates the movement from shock so unique design to Vostok and it really is very effective because the movement is totally shock, pre uh, shock damage protected because of that without the crown guards. So lastly, I'll talk you through another unique design aspect, which is very clever. The Amphibia has a solid stainless steel uh, screw down case back. As you can see, Amphibia is engraved in Russian Cyrillic along with 
um, the specification of the watch in Russian Cyrillic. So Vostok means East in Russian and this watch is produced in the same plant in Chistopol in Russia as the original 1967 um, amphibia was. So the stainless steel case back is screwed down but it doesn't rotate as you can see amphibia is engraved horizontally straight across the case it hasn't been rotated clockwise. So the case back presses onto the tonneau case and then this stainless steel ring rotates around the case back. So the case back remains stationary, but the stainless steel ring rotates around it to screw it down to provide a compression fit between the stainless steel case back and also the tonneau case. Now, usually screw down case backs have a rubber O-ring to provide the hermetic seal between the case back and the case. But with a Vostok Amphibia, it actually uses a wider flat rubber seal, which is like a rubber gasket. And that rubber seal can be reused. It doesn't have to be discarded when the watch is serviced. And that's an advantage. It means that one doesn't have to change the O-ring. And the flat rubber seal, which is like a gasket, actually provides a more effective hermetic seal to 200 meters than a rubber O-ring. Because with a rubber O-ring, if you screw down the case back clockwise, it can actually pucker the rubber o-ring and disrupt the hermetic seal but bearing in mind that this gasket is flat and it's wide and the stainless steel case back remains stationary the stainless steel ring rotates not the case back the rubber gasket is not disturbed when compressing so it's actually a better design and although this is rated to 200 meters of water resistance the design could actually withstand 300 meters of hermetic pressure so Really, I have to give credit to Vostok. That was originally designed in 1967 and it really was ahead of its time. The design of the hermetic seal of that case back in gasket really is very effective, as is the clutch mechanism in the crown I've discussed and also the 3mm thick lucite dome crystal. So three unique features of the amphibia which I think that Vostok deserves full credit for. So I'll talk you through the rest of the specification of the piece. This watch is covered by a one-year international guarantee by um, chistopolcity.com, which is perfectly acceptable. And as I've discussed, this watch uses the Calibre 2415B automatic movement. So it's a 31 joule automatic movement with 40 hours of power reserve, and it has a very impressive 10-year service interval. Now, normally with automatic movements, one would expect a five-year service interval. To get a 10-year service interval really is exceptional. Now, in reality, it's often the case that Vostok Amphibias are run for 20 to 30 years with no servicing whatsoever. And I'm pleased to report that the movements still do run within their stated accuracy limits. So it's not the most accurate of movements, but it is indestructible. They never break down, they never fail, they are indestructible very reliable, well-proven workhorse movements. The stated accuracy of the Calibre 2415B is minus 10 seconds to plus 30 seconds per day. So it's got a wide accuracy range, minus 10 to plus 30. It's nothing special. But however, bear in mind that it will run for 20 to 30 years within those limits. That is impressive. Now I'm pleased to report that this one is running at plus 12 seconds per day, which is perfectly acceptable. So with regards to the rest of the specification, one thing I really like about this 090661M is that it has the iconic original 1967 amphibia dial layout of 12, 9, 6 and 3, those large Arabic numerals. Clearly legible dial design and I absolutely love the silver sunburst style finish. The large Arabic numerals and indices beautifully contrast with that silver sunburst style and the arrow hands are very functional and clearly legible. One can see the arrow heads on the hour hands clearly and also the sweeping second hand is red so it contrasts beautifully with the dial. Absolutely love the distortion of the domed crystal and the silver sunburst dial contrast. So one thing I want to talk about is the beat rate of the movement because it's rather unusual. This is a comparatively low beat movement. The beat rate is 19,800 vibrations per hour. Now the industry standard for automatic movements is 28,800 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 4 hertz. And the reason why that's become the industry standard for automatic movements is it is the ideal compromise between power reserve and also accuracy. 28,800 vibrations per hour and 4 hertz gives that perfect 
um, accuracy. It's the sweet spot between accuracy and uh, power reserve. So this movement has a 40 hour power reserve, but a low beat rate of 19,800 vibrations per hour. And the negative is that it doesn't have a particularly accurate um, calibration as a result, but one can live with it. Now the sweeping second hand as a result does judder around the doll quite slowly as you can see it does have quite a, a slow judder rather than a smooth sweep of 28,800. 19,800 gives quite a judder to the second hand when it sweeps around the dial. But I like the movements, I think it's very reliable, it's well proven, it's a good solid workhorse movement. So what are the negatives to the watch? Well, the watch itself is excellent, but the bracelet is absolute rubbish. It's a throwaway bracelet. It's made from stainless steel throughout, and the links are folded. As you can see, looking at the flanks, they are folded links rather than being solid links. It's a very lightweight, rattly bracelet, and the negative of using folded links, as you can see, is that each of those folded links has a split in the link. And the problem with that is they pull your arm hairs out. So I would describe wearing this bracelet as torture because it really does constantly pull arm hairs. So if you're buying this watch, you need to factor in throwing away the bracelet and replacing it with either a NATO strap, rubber strap, or alternatively uh, a stainless steel bracelet with solid links. It really is the weak point of the watch. And at 73 US dollars, one cannot be critical of it because they've clearly put all the build quality, the quality control and materials into the watch itself, the head of the piece. The bracelet really is a cost cutting measure to make the watch viable at 73 US dollars. It has hollow folded end links, which are very poor quality. And the flip lock clasp is very light gauge metal. So as you can see, it's signed with a B for Vostok. It's a basic flip block clasp, it's pressed metal. The interior is matte finish, stainless steel, very light gauge of metal, very cheap quality. So it really is a throwaway bracelet. I find it to be abhorrent. The build quality, the finishing, and the gauge of metal used are all very poor. So that's the negative of the watch. The bracelet is rubbish, but the watch is outstanding. So I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how the watch fits on my eight inch wrist. Now I haven't sized this stainless steel bracelet. I've simply taken the watch out of the watch box and you can see how it fits on my eight inch wrist. And as you can see, I'm pleased to report, I can easily fit my index finger underneath the bracelet. So it would actually fit up to a maximum of an eight and a half inch wrist. Now the positive of this tonneau case is the fit is, super, is sublime. This is one of the most comfortable watches I have ever worn. The 41mm tonneau case wraps around the wrist and it has a beautiful undercut. It really feels like an invisible watch. It feels weightless despite the 41mm and the large tonneau case. It's very comfortable on the wrist. Wraps around the wrist very well, although it's 15mm thick, it will easily slip underneath a shirt cuff. And I really like the 22mm lug width because it spreads the weight of the watch across that 21mm bracelet very well. So it's a very well balanced piece, although it has a large 41mm tonneau case. The 3mm thick Lucite dome crystal is very aesthetically pleasing. Nice distortion and magnification from it on the dial and hands. So incredibly comfortable watch and just an absolute pleasure to look at on the wrist. The feel good factor is outstanding. So one other thing I want to talk you through is another unique feature, uh, which is typical of the periods uh, that this watch was originally made in 1967. It has a bi-directional friction bezel. As you can see, one can rotate the bezel both clockwise and anti-clockwise. Now, that might seem to be unusual to you because these days watches usually have either a 60 click or 120 click unidirectional bezel with a ratcheting mechanism. But bear in mind that this was produced originally in 1967. That predated the use of clicking bezels. They really became popular in the 1980s. Now, Vostok has retained the original bidirectional friction bezel um, design. Underneath the stainless steel bezel has a wire ring which is bent into an octagon shape and that actually provides um, the friction for the stainless steel. So the stainless steel bezel is snapped onto the tonneau case and it's locked on with a copper wire um, in that octagon shape and that provides the friction of the bezel. 
So I find it to be very aesthetically pleasing. It's polished to a flawless mirror finish and it really is very similar to the original 1967 bezel that was used on the Soviet naval divers military issued amphibious, the 2209s. So I actually like it. I don't regard it to be detrimental that the uh, bezel is bi-directional and friction based rather than clicking with a ratcheting mechanism. So lastly I'll discuss the tonneau case finish. This is the matte finish, so that's why it's the 090661M, the M denotes matte. The other alternate finish is one can have a mirror polished finish. Now it's divisive. Some collectors prefer the bead blasted finish of the matte case because it gives the watch a tool watch aesthetic. It looks like a military issued piece. It's very utilitarian, industrial and functional. Um, but I personally like both finishes. I like both the mirror finish and also the matte finish that we're looking at here. So I would say to you, consider both. Um, they're both finished to a very good standard. Now with regards to the finishing of the bezel, the coin edge, solid stainless steel crown, the case, it's just done to perfection throughout. There are no quality control issues with this piece whatsoever. The finishing, the build quality, the quality control are all 10 out of 10. Excellent. So I'll give you a loom test and you can see how the loom performs when it's fully charged using my 100 LED torch. So originally in 1967, the Amphibia used tritium loom, which has now become obsolete because it's radioactive. Tritium was then replaced with Luminova, um, which Luminova is not radioactive, so it was safer to use um, by the Soviet naval divers um, on submarines, for example, and naval ships. So that's now fully charged. Now as you can see the green Luminova is very aesthetically pleasing because it does have a similar tone to tritium. So it does retain that vintage aesthetic of tritium loom. It does look similar but unfortunately there's not a lot of loom on the indices. They're just dots of loom as you can see and the arrow hands do not have a lot of loom applied to them. So Initially it glows very brightly, but as you can see it's beginning to fade and fade fast. So I'm going to be honest with you and say that the performance of the Luminova used on the Amphibia is poor. It's nothing special. It's a shame that Vostok do not loom the 1296 and 3 large Arabic numerals and indices because that would be far more aesthetically pleasing and also it would be better if they upgraded to C3 or C1 Super Luminova. The use of Luminova really is a cost-cutting measure. Super Luminova is far superior in terms of how bright it glows and the length of time it glows for. So that is the negative of the watch, the poor quality loom, and it's just something one has to live with. So what do I think of the watch? Well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the watch should meet two criteria. The watch should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So this is a low tier price point piece, it's 73 US dollars. Now I consider this watch to be a champagne watch for lemonade money. At 73 US dollars the value is not just good, it is excellent value, it simply cannot be beaten. This is the best watch money can buy for 73 US dollars, it cannot be beaten. The build quality, the quality of materials, the specification, the quality control are all outstanding. It simply cannot be beaten at 73 US dollars. Excellent value. Now, what do I think of the quality? Well, I'm going to have to dissect the watch. The head of the piece is absolutely outstanding quality. It is excellent. The bracelet is absolute rubbish. It's a throwaway bracelet. So I would say that overall, yes, the watch is excellent quality and excellent value because the head of the piece is very good. But the bracelet is rubbish and it's a throwaway bracelet. That's the truth of it. So one has to factor that in, but I'm still going to say overall the watch is a heavy hitter. I think that at 73 US dollars, even though the bracelet is poor quality, even though the loom is poor quality, this is an iconic watch and it really does have Soviet naval diver military pedigree behind it. I absolutely love it and I think that the 090 series with this tonneau case is the very best looking Vostok Amphibia out of all of the different models they do. So I'm going to highly recommend this 090661M for your consideration. I think it is worthy to be included in any watch collection. I absolutely love the watch. So I hope you've liked my review of the Vostok Amphibia. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.